Hey everyone, today we're doing a quick review on ratios, rates, and unit rates as requested. We'll go through the definitions of what each term is and a couple real life examples of ratios, rates, and unit rates. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to this channel for more math videos and study tips. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up for good luck. Let's go. So what exactly is a ratio in math? A ratio is a comparison of two quantities. If you look at our first example, which is this group of people, we'll notice that there are more boys than girls. So we can say the ratio of boys to girls is three boys to two girls. You can write the ratio as three to two or three colon two or three over two. But out loud, you would just say that the ratio of boys to girls in this group is three to two. You can also flip it and say the ratio of girls to boys is two to three. Either way, you're saying the same thing, that there are more boys than girls in this group. If we look at another example, say I'm making this fruit salad and I want to incorporate some strawberries, but I like blueberries better. So I want a higher ratio of blueberries to strawberries. If you see here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six blueberries and one, two, three strawberries. So the ratio of blueberries to strawberries is six to three, which can also be written in these different ways. We can also talk about simplifying the ratio, just like how we simplify normal fractions. If you divide both numbers by three, the ratio of blueberries to strawberries simplifies to two to one. This actually tells you that for every two blueberries, you have one strawberry. This all sounds super abstract and useless, but in real life, you'll hear ratios used in statistics like you have a one in 292 million chance of winning the Powerball lottery, or just in everyday life for a chocolate chip cookie recipe, your ratio of flour to chocolate chips is three to two, which means for every three cups of flour, you use two cups of chocolate chips. So then what are rates? Remember how a ratio is the comparison of two quantities? A rate is actually a specific type of ratio. A rate is also a comparison of two quantities, but with different units. So before we were comparing boys and girls, where the units of both numbers were people or humans, but with rates, the units of the numbers might be different. In the real world, you'll often see rates as it relates to time. For example, you'll hear about miles per hour or kilometers per hour if you're outside of the United States. And this is in the context of speed or driving or traveling. Let's look at if you're on a road trip from Los Angeles, California to San Francisco, California. The distance between these two cities is 360 miles. It'll take you about six hours without traffic to get there. So the rate you'll be going is 360 miles per six hours. Whenever you hear the word per, this means division. So you can actually write this rate as a fraction where the miles goes on top and the hours go on the bottom. We'll talk about unit rates a little later and that's where we try to make the number on the bottom equal one. You'll also commonly see rates that include money for example, if you're at a store buying one of those huge packs of bottled water, let's say it costs $4 to buy a pack of 32 water bottles. So written as a rate, we have $4 per 32 water bottles, which we can also write as $4 over 32 water bottles. Another real life example includes heart rate. So for example, if your heart rate is 60 beats per minute or 60 BPM, that means that your heart actually beats 60 times every minute. If your heart starts beating faster during exercise or if you're anxious, your heart rate might go up to 100 or more beats per minute. 
I mentioned earlier, we're also going to talk about unit rates. As a reminder, a ratio is a comparison of two quantities. A rate is a specific type of ratio, and it's also a comparison of two quantities, but with different units. And now a unit rate is a specific type of rate. It's also a comparison of two quantities with different units, but for a unit rate, its denominator equals one. If we go back to our previous example of the road trip from LA to San Francisco, our rate was 360 miles per six hours. In order to get the unit rate for that trip, we need to make the denominator equal one. We can do this by dividing both numbers by six. 300 divided by six equals 60, and six divided by six equals one, which is exactly what we wanted for our unit rate. So now that our denominator equals one, we found our unit rate, you often hear this said as 60 miles per hour. So this is how fast you should go on average in order to reach San Francisco in six hours. If you drive slower at like 40 miles per hour, it'll take you longer than six hours. Obviously, if you drive at a higher rate or a higher speed, like 75 miles per hour, you will get there faster than six hours. Of course, you risk getting caught by the cops and you risk your safety, which is not worth it. So don't speed. For our second example, when we were talking about rates, if we wanted to figure out how much the unit rate of each water bottle is, we want to make the denominator equal one. We can do this by dividing the top and bottom by the denominator, which is 32. I'm using a calculator here, but we will get $0.125 on the top and one on the bottom. So our unit rate is $0.125 or 12.5 cents per one bottle. This doesn't make practical sense because you can't really have 12.5 cents, but you get an idea of how cheap it is to buy water bottles in bulk. Technically, this means you're paying 12.5 cents per bottle. Just compare that to the price of vending machines where you're paying at least $1 to get one single bottle of water. So now you know what a ripoff vending machines are. <laughs> Better yet, you can buy a refillable water bottle and fill it for free at a water fountain. I hope you all learned something in this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if it did help you out and subscribe for more math tutorials and study tips. Comment down below to let me know what other topics you want me to cover. See you in the next video.